Hello, chat. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. Um, hi, I can see you all. Hello. Um, I have some news, some pretty unfortunate news. Um, I know that you guys thought that Doug was going to be here in this tent with me. Um, and unfortunately, he is waiting for a haircut. So I know a lot hey, of... Hey, where's my haircut? So um, I have some business to attend to. Um, I will be right back. Hello, chat. Uh, today I'm going to be cutting Doug's hair today because he's been sitting here waiting for a haircut for the last 30 minutes. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good day. Welcome to the Witching Hour podcast. We didn't actually talk about what you're doing to my hair, but that's fine. I trust we, you. Well, that is part of the experience. Um, so I'm now going to grab my cape so that you don't get covered in hair. So I know you guys are used to me doing the podcast in the tent, but Doug said I either had to pick one, I either had to have him on the podcast, or I had to give him a haircut. So I'm improvising. So what are we doing for your haircut? Uh, make it look good. Okay. That doesn't tell me anything. Uh, I mean, normally, I, I uh, two clip on the sides and then make it look good. Cool. Chat, should I do that or should I not do that? Specific <laughs> thing. It would be really funny if you shaved me bald, but <laughs> I would be upset about it. Okay. I'm going to do exactly what you said with a twist. Okay. I don't like that. Okay. And I know what the twist is, and I'm not going to make it up on the fly. And this is a duo podcast, which is easy because chat might not know this, but I actually cut hair for like almost 10 years. So I'm kind of taking multiple skills and I'm combining them into one, which is big for me. How do you analyze like my head right now? I am actually curious about this. Like, like, like what the, are you, what are you doing? Like you see this fresh mop that you get to, um, like the roundness. I don't know. Like how do you evaluate a person's hair? Um, well, you kind of, you, first of all, you feel out the vibes of them. And then secondly, you do actually, there actually is a science to it. So you look at like their jaw shape and if they have like a longer face, then you usually give them like more of a square haircut. So you have huh. like kind of like a, a longer face. So I'd give you a square haircut. Okay. Cause like, imagine if I gave you a haircut that was like thin and then you had a thin face, then your head would just look like a Tic Tac. Which is funny. Which is funny. <laughs> Um, but we don't, you know that. what? Tic Tacs are, they're bald. <laughs> they are bald. <laughs> we could do that. Um, make it look like an ibuprofen. But if you had like a really square jaw and then we did like a square haircut, then you would look like a Tic Tac, a Tic Tac, like a big, a buff Tic Tac. No, like what, what are the mints that you get out of like the little mint container and they're square, the, the chewy ones, you know, there's a little, they're like, they come in the tub and then you Andy's mints. <laughs> yep. Um, Wrigley's. That's gum. That's not the correct. Allegedly, look what I almost or did. It. Yeah, no, that wouldn't. That would be great. <laughs> I I actually got my head accidentally fully shaved one time because I went to the barber and I said I I was like I'm gonna stop going to the barber not knowing what to say. I'm gonna tell them what I want. And so I looked up, um, I looked up online of like what lengths are and I was like, okay, I think I want. Ooh. No, I'm just okay. <laughs> Damn it. That actually got me for a sec. Yeah. Um, I. I think it was like I wanted him to use a one inch clip, uh -huh. but instead I said I want a one clip. Yes, yeah, so which that's is different. Which is the shortest, yeah. It's one eighth of an inch. Yes. Which is not what you said. Right. Yeah. And so and so I thought I was gonna get the length of hair that I currently have, and instead he so and then he he held it out and he was like, Are you sure this is what you want? And I because I didn't know any of the terminology and I just learned it and I was like, I just have to be confident. <laughs> It's a, yeah, a one, a one inch. And then he was like, okay. And then did a strike down the middle. And I was like, what the fuck? So and then. Here's the difference. This is a one, this is an eight. So this is what he wanted. Yeah. This is one inch. So it's eight eighths. But what he asked for is a number one. Which is <laughs> this one. Yeah. Yeah. And he really, he really like gave me the opportunity to correct what was happening. So he expected this and he got this. Yeah. So and that is. There are pictures online, I think, of me with the bald head. This is like 2017, 18. So that's your worst haircut experience is just getting it cut too short? It's not just that it was too short. It's mm -hmm. that I was expecting my hair to be very slightly reduced in length. And then to watch him just shear a line down the middle was a particular... Like, there was like a couple seconds where I was just looking at it. Did you tell him or were you like... 
Good. No, I was like, what What did you just do? Because oh. he was like shaking afterwards. He was so nervous. I think he could Were tell. Were you mean? No, no, no. I, you seem kind of like the guy that would tell uh, somebody if their steak was like slightly overcooked, but like you're fine with it. Yeah, I'd be very gentle. Like, oh, you know, this was overcooked, but it's fine. That's what I tried to do, but I was like kind of shocked. The, the, see, the dude clearly understood that I didn't know what I was talking about mm -hmm. and gave me enough opportunities to correct it mm. that I didn't capitalize on. And so then when I finally realized what was going on was when he had shaved the line down the middle of my head. Did he start in the back? And then you couldn't see it? Or did he start he like... He started almost... like middle here. Were you getting back. a buzz cut? Well, oh, okay. that's what I, it turned okay, into. Okay, like that That's the I thing. Understand. Afterwards, I was like, okay, if you get the sense that I don't know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about, why mm -hmm. wouldn't you start at the right. sides? And then I would go, whoa, that's way too short. You can yeah. salvage the top. Instead, he went down the middle. So yeah, I, was like, I guess my confusion is like every haircut I've ever done, I've never... And chat, I don't know, maybe about you guys, like regardless of what the sides and the top are, I've never just started from the top and just fucking right. mowed down the center. Right. Why like, would you do very that? Dramatic. That's like some Sweeney Todd shit. Yeah. That's unhinged. Do you remember your first haircut? No. Does anybody? I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like a traumatizing experience from my end whenever I give kids first haircuts. Um, one t So my trick whenever I used to give haircuts is I used to turn the TV on for kids. Yeah. Because you just throw some like cartoons on and it's just like brain rot and they just love it yeah and one time i did that and the mom comes over and she was like "Ooh, we actually don't let him watch television <laughs> and i was i looked at her and i was like never and she was like no we don't and i was like okay well maybe like this time could we and she was like "Ooh, i'd prefer it if we didn't so that's like my that's like my magic thing that's like what i do to get the kids to shut the fuck up and so she took that away from me i smell an opportunity here which is that i could convince barber shops to put my stream on mm -hmm. as the background right. for children mm -hmm. And then they, I guess they would associate me with like scary. Are you, are you saying your audience is uh, children? Uh, no, they just act like children. God, you're so egotistical, Doug. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. That's obviously a stupid thing to do. He's like, I want everyone to watch me starting from children. It would be funny to do that, but with dentists. Because like True. everybody hates being at the dentist. And then, <laughs> and then if... If, like, thousands of people around the country associate your stream with, like, horrible pain in their yeah. in their face, that that'd be true. sick. That's kind of like, what do they call it when they ring the bell for the dogs when they feed them? Oh, oh Pavlov's. Yeah, so yeah. it'd be like that, so when they watch yeah. your stream, they think they just have a cavity. Yeah, we Pavlov them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do you think there's a scenario where they have ever played you? Where do, Where's the weirdest place that you hope they've played your stream? Ooh. That is a tough question, but like your dream scenario, there is a gathering of people watching your stream. Where are they? That gives you a little chuckle. Like, did you see the clip of Germa where the guy was playing his stream in the bar and Germa kept writing like, hey, everybody in the bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, but not a bar, maybe like a funeral. I don't know. The, the actual answer is that I would, I get very uncomfortable with the idea of anybody watching my stream in a group setting. Don't you? Wouldn't you feel weird about that? Like if like, they like were sitting, silent. Yeah, if they like, were silently. Watching yes, like they're stream. sitting around. I went to a friend's bachelor party, and this was to fuck with me. But I showed up, and they had twelve guys sitting in a circle watching my videos, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Turn that off now! This is uncomfortable." And they kept okay. turning it on all night. They did that at my birthday party. They played my YouTube videos yeah. on the TV yeah. at my birthday party. Awful! It's awful. It's awful. I don't like to imagine that any of the people watching my channel are real. Like they live real lives. I imagine them as a, some sort of like fairy creature yeah. that just sort of screams into the chat and then right. disappears. So you, like, when you first started doing content creation, you were making, what was, what was your OG content, remind me? Hearthstone. 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 Okay, tell me about why you started doing that. Um, with Hearthstone, so this is 2015. Okay. I was working at Electronic, beloved company, Electronic Arts, working in their beloved mobile gaming department working in the beloved team that makes the beloved feature that logs you into Facebook and tracks all of your data and gets money from you. And as fulfilling as that job was, I was realizing I would I hated it. And so I was exploring other things. Or I was just clear, like, I didn't want to do programming. That was the main thing. I realized I didn't want to do game development. Um, and I had an epiphany where I was watching a bunch of Twitch. This is, this is a long time ago now, right? Like, yeah, what year is this? 2015. So, okay, so you know, twi twi was it Twitch or Justin TV? Twitch. Twitch. So Twitch was like a thing, but not 
mainstream at all, okay. right? It's like you had to be a you had to be a gamer to know what Twitch is. Okay. And then um while watching Twitch, I realized I had this big epiphany of like, okay, I've loved video games my whole life. They're like my favorite thing. But what I like isn't playing the actual game, really. It's not making a video game. That's not actually what I enjoy. What I enjoy is connecting with other people through games. And I was like, wait a minute. All of my favorite games are multiplayer games that I'm playing with other people. Or it's a single player game where my brother is on the couch and I'm watching him play. Like it was, it's never about me just sitting there grinding right. video games. It's like and the that, connection between you and Yeah, you yeah. And I was like, okay. okay, I get it now. It's not that, it's not, it's not really video games. Video games are like a, a vesicle for me to, you know, connect with people. Vesicle. Um, vehicle and then and so then I realized wait a minute hold on I could do like content type stuff potentially and then Hearthstone was really really popular at that time and I was watching a bunch of them on Twitch and on the Hearthstone Reddit it was really really popular but all the content on the Reddit sucked mm. well, there's also an ad right now I could read an ad to them <laughs> you read to a match fake ad? yeah okay, let's make up a fake product really quick Oh my, no, no, my yeah. butthole's too tight. Has your butthole too tight? The new turbo expander can jam in and spread out. You will never have to, pa have passing, a, the, passing the, the baton, a, passing I the baton. I will never have to have a tight butthole. Wait, it's expanding my butthole? Uh, it's making it tighter. But, the, but then, but afterwards, it, it, it comes in where it tricks to a tighter. I will never have a small butthole that also needs to get it tightened again afterwards ever yeah. again yeah this sorry is good. continue hearthstone uh right so this is 2015 i'm watching about of hearthstone my asshole's tiny and i am thinking like okay i want to pivot to something else and then i i i was you know on reddit all the time back then and i realized that in the hearthstone reddit and for anybody who's old and like me and was following hearthstone back then hearthstone was ultra ultra popular mm. Like, so many people watched it on Twitch. So many people were playing. It was, like, really culturally relevant. But then nobody made interesting content about it. All it was was, like, clips from people playing games. It was just clips from streamers. It wasn't... Well, Hearthstone, like, is popular, but it's not, like, super... Like, there's not just crazy action happening all the time, you know? Yeah. But what, it was just weird because no, there was no replay system in the game, right? Mm. So there was no way for people to get footage to then use. Mm. Um so, like, unless you were streaming it, you nobody had anything to, like, work off of, right? Whereas most other games, you could, you know, do replays or whatnot. Sure. Um, and so the the quality bar for what people were putting on Reddit is was just really bad. And then I, I, somehow that led to me having an epiphany. I think I saw a video from another creator at the time that was pretty bad. And I was like, I could do that. I don't know how to make videos or anything, but I could do that. And so then I, I was like, let me see how video editing works. And I picked it up. I downloaded... Premiere and bought some tutorial thing and started and within a couple days I was like video editing is awesome mm. and that I've talked about a little bit how it just like it's like my brain lit up I was like yeah. wait this is what I'm supposed to do which it's I don't know if, if you've moment. had that but yeah, that's, yeah I mean that was literally me when I started when I started making YouTube videos off of Twitch because like I don't take my VOD stuff I just like make like video like uh, essay stuff yeah and so the because I always hated taking VODs and editing them I still hate it but making a video off of Twitch, like that was the moment for me where I was like, I don't think I've ever loved anything more than doing this. Yeah, yeah. So I had this moment where I was like, wait a minute, I love to do this. And so then I broke up with my girlfriend, I quit drinking alcohol, and I just started dedicating like every hour of every day and every weekend and all my vacation time to making videos. And then I quit EA and I stormed out of there and I put out a video on Reddit. <laughs> that was a terrible idea. But it um, sort of worked out because five months later I got a job in LA. Do you remember the first video that you posted that kind of like popped off or was it like a slow So increase? it was wild. The first one popped off. So oh. I posted this video called Five Secret Arena Tips, I want to say. Okay. And it got to like the second spot on the Reddit. And it mm -hmm. got 50 or 70,000 views in the first 24 hours, wow. which is so much if you're you know a person like that's a crazy amount to yeah. to get yeah. the problem is that during that whole period none of the views i got transcended out of reddit oh. so it never ever grew on youtube at all and then it was it would just get pop you know the videos would do okay on reddit 
and then die immediately. Yeah. And so I was like, I was just living and dying on Reddit. Yeah. And then the second week I put out a video that I had put as much effort into and it sucked mm. on Reddit. Also, I think it wasn't very good, but it was, you know, it just didn't do well. And then I had like massive panic attacks. Like, mm. I quit my job for this. What the fuck? I had like a two or three day long panic attack. And then I got a lot of motivational speeches from my parents. Yeah. About how my grandfather came here from Germany and he didn't quit sure. growing sorghum in southwest Texas in his metal shack with no AC and running water. Yeah. And it's he didn't like quit. You. He like literally you know, hiked, hiked his way up to Ohio so he could pork my grandma and yeah. bring her back and raise a bunch of good, honest American children in Goals. the barn together. Yeah. Um, and like they, The American they, dream. They sure. raised a lot of children in there and those children went on to work in the sorghum farms. Mm -hmm. And now I technically own part of a sorghum farm. You do? Yeah. So if you're looking for a new place for your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it to the farm. Okay, so you were talking about double fisting mics. Were we? You were talking about... Uh, I was talking about deep-throating and... sorghum. Yeah. Like at a oh, patriot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we found sorghum. So your grandpa walked up a hill, porked your grandma, and made sorghum. Uh, yeah. Okay. My grandpa ejaculated my grandma, yes. right? They had, they had like, my dad, yeah. and then my dad ejaculated on my mom. They had me. Okay. And so then my dur during this period where my videos were first failing, yeah. um, my dad, I guess the ejaculating my mom part wasn't relevant, but my dad... Well, it did make you. He ejaculated some advice to me, which I'll never forget. He said... He, like, verbally ejaculated into your ears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, and I'll never forget how his advice felt felt deep inside of me right exactly which, which is that it's just really like he said the reams don't quit your brain. that is actually a real thing it was like he said the reams don't quit reams that's my last name oh okay and, and how when he was having like some really hard work stuff he, he talked to his older sister who was like reams don't quit okay. you are gonna get through this mm -hmm. and he was like your grandfather went through incredibly hard times I other than his name was doug <laughs> So that's, this is kind of before I, I changed it. Also, oh. my, and this is when my grandfather had dementia, so he he was way off at this point. Uh, but he's been dead this whole time, by right. the way. Not when he ejaculated on my grandma, but like after that, like he's been and dead. Your grandma was alive, also. Well, I was not there, so. Because the the pregnancy post mortem. And so I came out of that going, all right, I'm not going to quit making videos, and I picked it up the next week and that video did okay mm -hmm. and then i did the next week and that video did okay and then every single week i'd made a new video and had a new panic attack when it did well or didn't yeah. do well on reddit and i did that for five months and it was mm -hmm. absolutely terrifying and then i got a job offer from esl to come help with hearthstone esports stuff mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god a way out so during the hearthstone era of doug doug i made about a video every week and a half mm -hmm. On average, the videos were averaging like 50,000 views, right? Okay. Five months okay. of videos before I before I quit and went to, to ESL. How much total money do you think I made? $1,000. Little lower. $824. $3.18. Total? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. not per video. No. Total. That's a lot. Yeah, so... I did need to get a job yeah. quite badly. And so then I when I got the job offer, I was like, yes! I I made it out of um I made it out of programming and then the job offer I got when I was at EA I was making a hundred and ten thousand dollars a year wow. at age twenty three which is pretty that's pretty good yeah pretty fucking good and that's just like the tech industry is crazy right right and the job offer I got after asking it to be higher <laughs> was fifty five thousand dollars so I took a fifty percent pay cut to come to a way harder job that was way more stressful with way more hours okay so obviously your content's not Hearthstone anymore. So when do you feel like the big turnover was for like what you do now versus like what you were doing then? Um, like, do you feel like it was a slow, gradual like turnover of just like I'm gonna start doing this and this and this, or do you feel like you just kind of like were like okay, I've just I found the new thing, I found the new. Yeah. So basically, over those three years, I kept trying things on YouTube, like different formats and whatnot. So I made like music or comp gaming compilations with friends or whatever, and then. I started, the, I've talked about this uh, uh, on my second channel. Oh, you've seen it. It's the content creator thing. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, I like, Great bed. yeah. So I decided to do a year of making a new concept every week mm -hmm. and started that in January, 2018 while I was still working other jobs. It was very hard. And then after five months of that, I finally landed on the style of like what I think I can do. That's really interesting, which is 
doing a stupid gaming challenge and then teaching it in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. And once I landed on that, I was like, oh my God. It was kind of like a, another, it was another, yeah. it was another moment of when I first tried video editing of going, whoa, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that just like clicked super hard. And actually, here's a funny anecdote that I don't know if I've told. All of my childhood, whenever I would make creative things like a song or a poem or you know some, some drawing or something that my friends and I did that we thought was funny, I would show it to my brother and he would always, you know, you know how when you show stuff to friends as a kid, they'll, they'll at worst, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's cool. But then they'll just ignore it from that point forward. They're not going to make an effort, but they don't, they aren't just straight up like, oh, that's bad. Right. Uh, my brother is very, very, very creatively genius. And is this the brother that did, uh, Stanley Parable? Yes. Oh, cool. So he growing up, like started a blog that was like mm -hmm. incredibly good and funny and the word blog is funny that it's kind of outdated now yeah because like nobody says blog it's either a vlog or something or it's like they're tweeting Davey is really 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 creatively talented and then so growing up like he would st he like started a band which was like a comedy band it was insanely funny and good and then he started a blog and it was insanely funny and good he learned flash animations and he like got to the front of newgrounds.com with like the most popular animation of the month like he just is really talented and mm -hmm. then i would show him stuff I'm like oh i just learned how to make music and he would go nice. yeah i mean that's a competent song i guess <laughs> It would just be really, really brutally honest. Uh -huh. And every time like, I'd show, I'd, you know, I'd make like, a, I made a lot of music in high school. So I would like show it to my mom. She'd be like, oh, it's so great. Oh, sweetie, this is so wonderful. I'd show it to my sister. And she'd be like, wow, great job, Dougie. And then I'd show it to Davey and be like, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I guess it's fine. But like you, <laughs> some one of the things he would say is like, you obviously know this isn't very good. <laughs> and I would be like, no. <laughs> and he wasn't trying to be mean, obviously. Just to him, it was like obvious and then, did you like want the approval more because of that? Oh yeah. You, or were you like? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I remember when I, I made a I, I made a game in college, so I like wrote a full I made a full two D platforming game from scratch, mm -hmm. which took me months, and I finished and I did everything from scratch. It was this insanely hard thing that I was really proud of, and I showed it to him, and he gave that comment, and I was like, "It is. I thought it was. I thought it was good." Oh. He was like, his comment was like. He assumed that I was showing it to him in like a crappy early prototype phase no, where I, the rough draft. right, where I was like, okay, this obviously kind of sucks, but any early thoughts. So that's how he, he just talked about it. I was like, oh no. Oh my God. Um, Did he get that from like, can you see he got that from anybody else in your family or is he just like a wild card like that? He's just hard on himself too. Oh. Like he just has really high standards because he's insanely Mm -hmm. uh good at what he does i mean I, he's like the most creative talented yeah. person i know are you like that kind of or like do you feel like you're hard on that yourself? developed okay. because of that because i feel like i'm wondering if like you because siblings seem to either go like opposite or you know what i mean no oh, they're getting an ad okay are you tired of small little unsatisfying pepperoni pizza on your chest do you want to be a baloney mommy well we got the product for you the nipple stretcher. It's going to stretch those nipples to the side of the Hawaiian Islands. Are uh, your nipples too tight? <laughs> are you, okay. Okay. Back to uh, you being hard on yourself because your brother hated your... Yeah. So my grandpa ejaculated into my grandma. Basically growing up in high school in particular, my brother, my brother's feedback taught me to be very critical and honest with myself about what was going on. So then when I started making video editing, I was much harsher on myself and then continue to be much harsher on myself. Um, and, and even when I was making the Hearthstone videos that were were legitimately, like they were very popular, right? Mm -hmm. These were video, I was like a new content creator and I was getting 50,000 views of videos. Mm -hmm. This is like insanely popular. And people, there's like, you know, dozens of comments on Reddit saying how funny this stuff is. And then I would show it to my brother and be like, yeah, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. obviously you're leaning into like the sexual jokes way too much. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well I, well, I don't have any other jokes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was uh, even during the early years, like I, I don't think there's a single thing I ever made until I was 25 that and I showed everything to him mm -hmm. where he was like, oh, if he had anything to say other than, you know, right. this is yeah, it's it's OK. Mm -hmm. But like, obviously, it has these major flaws. And then when I in 2018, when I came across the like explain dumb gaming challenges, I hit the idea and I was like, oh my God. And then I spent like a week editing it and kind of refining it. And then I showed it to him and he sent me back a reply that was like, I really liked this. No. It really felt like it was a fun, unique journey. I liked the way he basically uh -huh. described all the things that I had thought was interesting about it that uh -huh. weren't traditionally thought of as interesting in content, but that I found was this mix that I was excited about. And he was right. like, oh, this is great. 
um, he, he would even say like, oh, this is the best thing ever. But he was just like, oh, you're really onto something here. I was like, oh, did you cry? oh, no, 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 I'm a man. What I don't was, have emotions. What, you, what was your reactions to the text? Did you drop your phone and then fall to your knees? <sighs> no, as, as big of a moment as I'm playing it up, it wasn't okay. as much because at that point I had internalized this kind of feedback. So mm. like I knew that that's what was going on. You know, right. it had taken 25 years, but I'd finally like gotten over that hump and, yeah. and it, it was a really nice confirmation, but I was already, um, you know, when you're like already stoked about something yeah. and then somebody comes along and they like give you a high five and you're like, fuck yeah, you're keep like, going. I need that high five. Yeah. You're like I have, I have five to myself. Right. Right. It's like, you're at a party and you're really drunk. You mm -hmm. don't need more booze. And somebody shows yeah. up with more booze. Yeah. And you're like, well, we'll drink it if it's here. Yeah. It's like if you've been pouring beer into your own mouth and then somebody shows up and they're like, let me. And then you say, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm good. And let's just say my grandpa's spirit came back. And ejaculated into your Into beer. my grandma. Um, the the read-ins up in heaven okay. were uh, so celebrating, so to yes. speak. Okay, just ejaculating in the heavens. Everywhere. everywhere. It was confetti. All um, it, it rained and it poured <laughs> in L.A. that day. God damn it. Okay, so. Did you know that day? Uh, thick snow in L.A. <laughs> Thick snow, thick sticky snow. Yeah, falling all over the capital, yeah, which I, is very far away, but somehow it got there. Yeah, um, my grandfather was very virile. Mm -hmm, true. So, so you're making videos. So, and they're like steadily inclining a little bit, or do you feel like there was one that like? I guess what was the first video that you were like, "Yep, this is it." <laughs> my hands are in so much pain. <laughs> don't squeeze it so hard. I feel like it's gonna break if I don't. I don't have tape. I have a tiny sombrero. I, I, if I alternate my hands, it's okay. Do you want to put a tiny sombrero on it? Uh, you don't have to. Sure. I it's guess kind just, of like dealer's choice. Just put it. Oh, in the. Okay, on the head. Got it. Well, I feel like if you hold the mic, then the tiny sombrero, if it falls off, you know that you're wiggling it too much. So, see, that's. We don't do that. Is we, we put keep the tiny sombrero on okay. the mic and well, then. Won't this mute the audio? or? Mm, I don't think. It makes you Spanish. Okay. I think it translates you. Do you want to? I've been learning Spanish. Do you want to do a full Spanish podcast? Yeah. Hola. <laughs> Mi tío ejaculando mm -hmm. entre mi. No, abuelo, mi, oh, abuelo mi abuelo y mi abuela mm -hmm. hacen semen. In her vagina. Oh. That's good. I'm glad that our Spanish listeners now are able to uh, understand the podcast and they love it. Do you speak other languages? Uh, nine. Are you saying you speak German? I'm saying I don't speak any other languages in, in, in German. German. Yeah. Fuck. I wish that I spoke another language. I don't. Uh, yeah, I actually really want to learn. I I've been enjoying learning Spanish a lot and I really want to get proficient. Like as soon as I have some more time, I want to I wanna hire a teacher and then actually get fluent. What, oh. was your, what was your subject in school that you were shit at? Uh, science. Weirdly mm -hmm. enough, because I'm like, I'm not terrible, or, mm -hmm. or I'm not like amazing at programming, but I, mm -hmm. I get it. And I'm, I'm like fairly good at math, I would yeah. say, if I, if I take the time to learn it. But uh, dude, chemistry and biology and physics, mm -hmm. awful. I don't understand I'm that awful at it. Yeah. Because I'm not dumb, arguably, but, but like with those subjects, dude, my brain just does not fucking work. Math always fucked me up. So where did you learn programming? College. College. And how, like, what did that do for your brain? How come you thought you wanted to do a career in that? Uh, okay. That this sounds is... really boring. It doesn't sound fun. So I decided to do programming in college just to try to get into game development. Mm -hmm. I, I literally, there's no game design degree or anything. Right. And then I was initially going to do neuroscience because I was like, okay, maybe this will like sort of, Christ. maybe if a neuroscience degree, they'll let me like be a game designer. But right. it turns out that nobody wants to hire a neuroscientist. And also basically the only thing game developers would care about that you could learn at a big university was programming. So after a year and a half of putting it off, eventually I was like, you know what? I should just bite the bullet and do a lot of programming because mm -hmm. I hated it the first like two years. But what's cool about programming, and any uh, nerd programmers here can back me up, what's cool is that it teaches you how to problem solve in general. Mm -hmm. So when I first entered college, I was the type of person who was really averse to things like uncomfortable situations or things I didn't know how to do. And I would just kind of give up at the sign of first sign of resistance mm -hmm. or ask somebody else to do it. And then with programming, like 
literally all it is is you're just given a weird problem to solve and you have to figure out how to solve it. And the subject of what the problem is changes, but that's basically all you're doing for four straight years. So by the end of it, you are really good at understanding, okay, if, I'm, if I am uh, met with a situation that I am not familiar with, I know how to handle it. I know how to look for solutions, mm. um, both literally with like Google, but also just how to think about it. And so I actually wonder if I hadn't done programming, if I would have ever leaned into the idea of like solving problems that nobody has because now that's how I like to think about stuff like life is so much more fun when you seek out problems and seek out solving them mm -hmm. uh, but I was the polar opposite of that before so it's actually like a huge change for me if you could go to college for like anything else like if you if you take your life in a different direction from it is right now what would you do okay hot take yeah college is overrated and is yeah. not a good way to learn I didn't go to college you didn't no nope. cosmetology degree Hmm. I was going to go to, what was I going to go to school for? There was a moment where I signed up for a community college right after high school. Yeah. And I think I was going to go for, um, I think I was going to go for like graphic design or no, maybe like communications or something. It was something very vague. I knew I liked talking to people, which I still do. I like talking to people. Um, and I knew that I like to do things creative. And so, which yeah. makes sense like for this. And also when I was doing hair, that also made sense for that. Um, but I knew that I wanted to work with people in a way where they wouldn't hate me while I was doing my job, which I think is like everybody's goal. But, um, I wanted to like help, help people have a good time and then also do something creative. Yeah. And so I started going in that direction, but, um, uh, did not go to college. Yeah. Did you live in a dorm? Were you in a frat? I wasn't a frat. You were in a frat. Yeah. I went to a frat party once when I was not in college, but I was college age. And they had this, the, it was beach themed. And so they had the whole basement of the fraternity covered in sand. And Jesus. sand is dangerous because if they, if you drop glass in it and there's broken glass, then it's going to fuck somebody up. And they had a slide. And not only did they have sand, they had a slide. And so you go down the slide into the sand in this basement of the fraternity and somebody did that and there was glass, like broken glass at the bottom of the slide in the sand. And the person went down the slide and just like fucked their shit up. That was the worst college party experience. It didn't even have anything to do with me. Jeez. It was awful. Yeah, frats are kind of a disaster. Mine was not very fratty. It was, mm -hmm. it was people like me who want to like make strong it sounds really generic mm -hmm. this is the most generic thing a frat guy can say but mm -hmm. like you just wanted to have really strong connections with friends yeah. and have a good time whereas for a lot of people who join fraternities the goal is to get really fucked up and get laid right, right. and that was not that was not what i was interested in at all in fact i was very good at not getting laid nice. because <laughs> yeah can we you're programming um there was a time like, no you're i was just bumping me right oh now? yeah i was trying to fist oh, bump you let's go. um yeah, it was just like things would happen. Like here's one. So we did like a paint party, which is where a sorority came over and everybody drinks a lot and then they go in the backyard and you pull out buckets of paint and everybody just throws paint at each other. And then you just the rest of the party everybody's covered in paint. It's a terrible that idea. Terrible. It's a terrible idea and it's just a huge mess to clean up afterwards, mm -hmm. but it is really fun in the moment. And so there was a girl who was there from the sorority who started like flirting with me and I was sort of flirting back and I was in my drunk but not too drunk phase right. and um I, I think she was under the impression i was like a normal guy who would be interested in potentially hooking up right. if we continued to talk and flirt while drinking as, more as you do. and instead i just kept drinking more and more nice. and just not taking the hint mm -hmm. and then eventually after like two or three hours of her like clearly suggesting that she was interested in doing more and me just not reading the room going oh let's go drink more let's go get more paint she was she said um do you want to show me to your room? <laughs> and, uh, and I said, no, nah, I think you should go home. <laughs> and then I took a few more shots Elders. and I was told that I then proceeded to spend the next hour running on the fire escapes on the side of the house naked. Wow. And I kept, so I would like climb on the fire escape so I could get to the outside of people's rooms who were hooking up and then climbing through the windows. And I was like fully covered in paint, right? And just naked. And I would just barge in. Um, there were like several stories of people who like, there was a woman who was, she's like a friend of mine. This is, it, she was losing her virginity. Uh -huh. And they were like hooking up and it was this passionate moment. And apparently I stole the house key to the house and kicked the door open, screaming at the top of my lungs and said, hey, dad, and jumped into the bed with them. Um, not like uh, like on the right, covers, right? right? Not not like in a right. sexual way, because I, I was so drunk at this point, I don't think I realized what was going on. Right. 
Uh, so instead and they, of getting laid, you got naked and then jumped in bed with a different couple. Yes. Okay. Or at least jumped on the bed, yeah. I think. Okay. No, um, continue. And so there was like paint on the outside of windows the next day because I had been crawling around on the fire escapes, um, again fully nude. And I this was this, I mean this would have been like cryptid. two a.m. or whatnot. Um, so I was I would just crushed it with the ladies yeah, in college. You, did. you crushed it with somebody's. <laughs> I crushed the lady crushed the into the bed <laughs> as she was trying to get. Yeah. Well. Okay. It's you know what the the end goal was technically correct. Tasha yeah. Failed successfully. Do you think that you'll ever, like, retire from content creation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because everybody that I've talked to that's got, like, a pretty significant following has, like, a retirement plan, kind of. Not even plan, but, like, I think I'll go this much longer and then I'll be done. You know, one year ago, mm -hmm. like, literally end, end of September, I thought it would be one more year. Yeah. Um, oh, really? One more? Yeah, like, I would be ending now. Why? Uh, cause I was just super, super burnt out. But then fortunately hiring a team has made that way better. And now every month that I do this, I'm like mm -hmm. the amount of time I want to do this increases. So now it's like way, way better. Uh, and I do not plan on, on ending this soon, but, um, I was not doing this in a healthy way the first couple of years. Did you want to stop doing this and then do something else or just like, what would, no, there's no plan. Well, I mean, the only thing I think it'd be fun to work with creators. So uh -huh. that's, you know, when, or whenever I end up stop doing what I'm doing, I think it would transition to something where I'm working with other people. And mm -hmm. even, even, even if I stop streaming and doing YouTube to the extent that I currently am, I don't think it would be like, all right, now I'm just disappearing into the void. I think it right. would be, hey, I am starting this project, this creative project with these people, and we're doing like a collaborative ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, did you ever watch Game Grumps? A little bit, not a super long. Yeah. Super amount. So less about like their content, but yeah. they did a good job. I always really admired that they got a bunch of creative people together into one like studio space and then just did cool creative shit together. Mm -hmm. And that is really, really appealing to me. Right. Um, whereas what I'm doing now is just the Doug show and sure. that's fine, but I don't really want the attention <laughs> particularly. Um, and so th this is like the right thing for me to do right now. But at some point I, I would want to transition to that. And then from there, who knows, you know, maybe to like, I don't know, production management or something. I'm not sure. Um, so I feel like every content creator talks about like the mental toll that it takes on. And you were talking about it earlier, how like every time you would post a video, you would be like, oh, fuck, that one's not doing good. Or, oh, that one's doing really good. Like, do you feel like now at this point, do you still have that? anxiety over posting videos or not so much yes really well you think it's gotten worse or better oh way better for sure oh, okay. um this is part of what i mean like a year ago i was like dude i can't keep doing this for very long because this is so draining mm -hmm. once i hired a team of people to manage the youtube side that's where it changed a lot mm -hmm. so barry bebop who you might know he lives in my house um have you met him mm, no well i so i hired him a while ago and Initially, he was my editor for the first year, a little over a year, actually. Mm -hmm. But then to the, towards the tail end of last year, I was like, I need to hire a manager who can help with all the creative side and management side and everything. And then Barry was like, I, I could be the, mm -hmm. I could be them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, yeah, sure, let, let's try it. And so, and then he's been doing great. But Barry is basically like managing the YouTube channel in a lot of ways and coordinating with the other four editors that we have and our thumbnail designer. So there's now a team of six people who are working on the YouTube channel and then that's like he owns that. So I am still quite involved with the YouTube. I, it's probably like 10 hours per video, something like that. Mm -hmm. We still like, I finish a stream and then I write up a full like document about it and how I think we should edit it and the general plan and initial mm -hmm. script and uh, ideas. And we review that together. And then the editor does a first version of the edit. And then like, for example, today we, we took two hours with Cy, one of our editors, and the three of us got on a call and then went through the first draft together and talked about structural stuff. So that's when it's more high level and we are talking about, okay, hold on, the general pacing for these sections feels too slow. Maybe we re revisit this. And so that's, I mean, that's like an example of the type of stuff that Barry does is after that first structural review, like what we did today, we'll go over for like a couple hours going through the video in a bunch of detail. And then the, the subsequent reviews and like finalizing the video of which there'll often be like three more reviews to like really get it super polished. That's all Barry and the editor. So I am now on the YouTube side of things. I'm there in the early stages to get the structure of a video locked in, but then all the specifics past that he owns with the editor. And that has been a huge 
huge lift off of my shoulders because it, it changed it from the YouTube videos are an expression of me and my creativity and my vision and approval. And I need to personally sit there watching every single frame and judging every single thing mm -hmm. to I get it kicked off and then I'm and then I'm done. And that changed it dramatically in terms of how everything feels. Now I'm more so like I'm responsible for the Twitch side and the team is responsible for the YouTube side. Is there like a video idea that like you like ideal video idea that you can't do but you really would wish that you could do like if you had infinite money if you had infinite money what would you do for video i don't know i feel like i have an infinite money okay richie <laughs> also i feel like for i feel like for your content it's not because it's not like mr beast it, that's stuff. the thing production doesn't it's, unlock anything it's not production it's like like can you come up with the way to do the thing that you want to do yeah it's like a puzzle i have enough money to live in a, in a nice place mm -hmm. to eat whatever i want my hobbies cost no money because i like video games and running and yeah. learning spanish yeah and then the content i want to do not only does it not require a lot of money, I generally think that spending more money and more effort or like higher mm. production value on things does not make it better. Yeah. And and I experienced that a lot when I worked in production of a lot of people's idea of how to make a thing better is just to put more resources at it. And what I found is that it's far more interesting to keep it as raw as possible. Mm -hmm. And that if your like raw ingredients aren't super compelling, it doesn't matter what you throw on top of it. Mm -hmm. And if your raw ingredients are super compelling, then it's going to be good, you know? Mm -hmm. So like my most popular videos, none of them have super high production value, right? It's just a weird idea. And then we like tell a good story. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask about like, there was the whole conversation about like the Mr. Beastification of YouTube and stuff. Like what's your take on that? I literally tell them, I've told my thumbnail designer several mm -hmm. times to like, un to de youtubeify it. And with multiple editors, when they onboard, they're like, hey, do you, want to, do you want me to do this type of like sound effect type stuff? I'm like, no, I do not want it to feel like Mr. Beast. Mm -hmm. I, I, I intentionally, we try, like Barry and I both try to make sure we never feel like Mr. Beast. Um, so no, I like to me, I want it like that. When stuff like that, when there's a trend, I just want to run in the opposite direction. It's yeah. like with YouTube shorts, right? Everybody's starting YouTube shorts, but like they look at the camera and go, I did this, whatever, whatever, and then this. And it's like so, it's so formulaic. And so when we wanted to start adding shorts, when we, when we started, Barry was like, we should try adding some intros to our shorts. And so I recorded it in the shower. And then that was really funny. Yeah. So like, like that's what I mean. I, 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 I hate following trends. It's so, it's boring. I'm just never interested in making a thing that other people mm -hmm. have done. Like that, to me, what is interesting creatively is to, yeah is like what will happen when you chase towards a goal that hasn't been accomplished. Right. And the instant somebody else has done the thing, I have no interest in it at all. Yeah. Like I'll have challenge ideas all the time that I then look up, oh, somebody's done this and I just have zero interest in it then. Right. Um, that's, I mean, that's exactly what Barry says. There's also with Twitch too, and I guess Mr. Beast doesn't do Twitch. So there's a whole conversation there of like, Twitch inherently is scuffed because it's live. Yeah. And I think that I kind of have, I don't want to say beef cause that's not true, but um, when I see Twitch production get too good, it like turns me off from it. Yeah. Because I just, in my head, it's like, okay, Twitch is supposed to have that inherent scuffed relatability to it. And I think that with YouTube and Twitch, as soon as it starts to lose that, uh, relatability yeah. where, cause I mean, when you remember, remember like watching YouTube videos when you were a kid, it was like some guys like Smosh, right? Like goofing off and they had a camera and it was a camera that you could probably go get if you wanted to. Um, and so it was relatable because it was like, these are people like me that are doing comedy that I could do if I was as funny as them. Um, and so now you get these like YouTube videos that the production value is like so high yeah. that it's like, well, maybe I'll just go watch Netflix. Yeah. I don't know. Because M Mr. Beast is just a, like a reality TV mm -hmm. game show yeah. now. It's like not, it's not anything. I don't know. It's like, I don't, I don't want to watch TV. Right? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like if I wanted like billion dollar production, I'd go watch like. I don't know, like something on Netflix, right? Because it's kind of the in-between area for me where it's like high production, I can't relate to it, but it's not Netflix level production. Here's a question okay. we can get into. Do you think that I should put that I am a YouTuber on my dating app profile? Because on the one hand, that's kind of pretentious sounding. A little bit. And, and it sounds like I'm coming off as like, oh, I'm so important. Mm. But on the other hand, that is a huge part of who I am and what I care about. 
And it's like, from my perspective, I don't care about mm. like fame or numbers. It's like, hey, I do a creative job that I'm super passionate about. That's where I would what try to be conveying. Say, but I probably I look like a douche, right? Say I, I do a creative job that I'm passionate about and I make a lot of money. That is worse. <laughs> that is so much worse. Because I feel like the somebody they might. So you're a from, sorghum farmer. Might, <laughs> you should. You know what you should do? You should make two profiles. We should make two separate profiles. One is gonna lean like more we A-B towards test being this. really pretentious. Okay. And one's gonna lean towards uh, sorghum farming, and then we'd figure out which one gets more swipes. We could make three. We could make five. We can make a good. Ironically, we can make content out of this and see, us, and see what works the best. Why don't we do that? We make like five different. I put up three <laughs> dating profiles. <laughs> see, okay, yeah, do five different profiles. Whichever one you feel like you get more matches with. I mean, not with this haircut. Shut the fuck up. It's not that. It's not bad. Okay, okay, so somebody said to put "I'm a content creator" in a in a dating app. Don't do it. But that sounds douchier than think, saying I'm a YouTuber. I think if you if you meet somebody and then you hit it off and then you're like, by the way, I'm a YouTuber, then it's fine. But if you say I'm a YouTuber, I if I was a normie, are you more inclined to like normies or people in the content creation space? This is actually a good question because some people like yeah, this is a do legit, not this is a legit date question. Creators, yeah, yeah. And some people only want to date content creators. Okay, so here here's so this is more serious, right? Yes. Um what I really care about with a partner is finding somebody who's super driven and like that so they is, can drive. They have a license. Right. Right. They're just well-traveled like a super high speedometer lift certified, uh, optional. Okay. Um, and so as long as they drive that forklift on a sorghum farm, nice. so I want to be, I want the profile to indicate I'm super driven and I'm like really focused on my career and my passions around my career. That's what I would want to connect with somebody about. Right. Sure. And my assumption is the type of person and like, you're a girl, you back me up here. If, if you're, if you see a profile and you are also a driven person looking for a driven person, presumably you would emphasize what you do as a job. Right. Yeah. Like, and I think it's, Probably a lo- probably the people, if I was like, I'm a YouTuber or like I make YouTube videos for a living, right. probably a lot of people would go, fuck this douchebag. But sure. other people would go, well, I am whatever, the CEO of like an, uh, of like an anus spreading company. Right. That is compelling because that is the mm-hmm. type of, that's my thinking. But maybe chat or you disagree. Well, I think like also I, like I, I genuinely don't know. LA like, too, like you're more likely to get people that understand like, because I think if you're uh, like on Tinder in Seattle, like you're probably more likely to find somebody that's like, I don't know what to do with a YouTuber. But like in LA, you're more likely to find somebody that realizes that, like the, what that entails, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. I think that that, I think most people that don't do any kind of content creation think, oh, I sit at home and I upload a video like once a week and it's really easy and it doesn't take any, you know what I mean? Like I think the, the concept of YouTubers to a lot of normal people are like, it's bad, it's not good. Like t- to me, I get so excited because I'm like, oh, another person who's like yeah. creative and makes stuff and, it, and is like right. super passionate about making stuff. Like every content creator is for the most part obsessed with yeah. talking about content, which I enjoy talking about. Well, yeah, that's that's like for me too is like I nowadays it's like, oh, that's that's like a creative because people that do this and especially that do it successfully, like really, really love it because you have to. Yeah. Like if you don't really love it don't do it because it will it's oh, yeah. going to, it's going to tear you apart but if you really really love it it's worth it but if you don't love it it's going to tear you apart and you're going to just be miserable so when you meet people that also like content creation like platonic like you know relationship whatever like the the just fuel that you get talking to another person about what you both love is like really it's great it's like really cool yeah so that's, I mean, that's for me, like, that's the important part is just like getting passionate about, which it's fun to hear anybody talk about anything they're passionate about, really. Right. Yeah. And that, that, that's what I want to filter towards. And right. theoretically, the people who are really passionate about stuff don't get filtered out if I say I'm a YouTuber. No. Here's another way of thinking about it. I want to be a bird of paradise. Okay. Bird of paradise do crazy ass dances, mm-hmm. right? Their whole thing is they do these like wild displays of dancing and feathers and whatnot. But their dances suck to any other species of bird, right? They're mm-hmm. really, really specific. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to do the cha-cha slide that everybody can participate in. Right. I want to be a bird of paradise. Right. There's going to be a couple birds out there who see my feathers and are like, that 
birds got g a good feather dance. And then all the other birds are going to be like, fuck that guy. Yeah. What a weird, why is it like a weird red YouTube bird? Can't know. see your feathers because you're bald. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you gotta have more feathers to make uh, it true. What do you think your red flags are? Um, pfft, hair, see, the hair problem cutter. problem is if you don't know what your red flags are, that's worse. Because if you'd be like, eh, I don't really know if I have any red flags, bad. Not good for you. Well, the biggest one is I don't want to have kids. So that's that's obviously, that's, just, that's not as much I of a red think flag. that's a red flag for like other people that also don't want to have kids. Right. That's not that's not so much of a red flag. It's just like a criteria yeah. that you're looking for. Because uh, my ex, I'm divorced by the way, Chad. If everybody didn't know, they're going to lose pog, it. Pog, poggies. That was, that was kind of like the final straw is like we had, we had, we had things like we had problems, but I realized I didn't want to have kids. And he was like, I want to have kids like tomorrow. And so I was like, I mean, anything else maybe could have been salvaged, but like you can't. Yeah. Not, That's not also that. a good thing to like get out on the table right at the beginning. Because if you learn yeah. that down the road, not, not great. Do you feel like doing what you do for a job is like, like could be a hindrance in a relationship for like time? Cause I feel like that's one thing that like I struggle with is like, like yeah, I, if somebody is, yeah, like I have a hard time putting anybody above what I want to do because I want to do what I want to do. You know? If they are very dependent on right. me, but, but that's like synonymous with driven to me is sure. like, if you're super driven, like I, I think that that comes naturally paired with, you know, you're super passionate about your work and, and I'm like, I'm a big relationship person. Like I really like relationships and being in relationships, but I need time to myself and need to focus on myself. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, yeah, I guess being like overly dependent, which obviously, you know, it's great for some people, but mm -hmm. not, not for me really. And I think that's an age thing too, as I feel like that specific thing gets dude, no, easier to find as you date later than when you're dating when you're like early 20s yeah that's probably true but don't you feel like there's a lot of couples for whom like once they start dating like that is their life you know yeah. they're like just yeah. fucking together all the time right yeah and that's um i think that one of the most important things in a relationship is like retaining like yourself like like apart from the other person because you do get there's a lot of relationships where they just become like one unit yeah and i think not only is that dangerous because then when you break up you're like who the fuck am i but also like you gotta like another thing too is like when couples have separate interests it's like that's good and you don't have to like bring your partner to do the thing with you because you should have time to go do that thing separately you know yeah like have time apart yeah so i think that's the thing is like couples feel like they have to they have to invite the other person into every aspect of their life which you don't have to do you don't have to do that yeah i don't know it's it's not important <laughs> have you just been cutting shorter and shorter to fill time? <laughs> well, are you ever going to end or is it just like you've gone to the same I spot like thing. 30 when times? I, when I used to cut hair in the barbershop, <laughs> when I was cutting somebody's hair, like I can do a haircut really fast. I can I mean, do a it's been like, like an hour. Minutes. It's been an hour and a half. <laughs> I can do a haircut in 15 minutes, <laughs> but I don't have to do a haircut in 15 minutes. Just leave wondering. some, just leave some there. Bald. Bald. Yeah, I've been cutting just like individual I'm, hairs. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> how much, how many inches have you cut off just as filler? <laughs> like when? Yes. Okay. I think, uh, see, I just gave you shit about not knowing red flags, but I'd have to take a second to think about mine. I think mine... So red, red flags is like... It's something, it's not like having kids where it's a broad mm -hmm. lifestyle thing, right? It's that right. you get into a relationship and then it's something that probably wouldn't have been known up front, right? And yeah. then it reveals itself and you're like, oh, this is a big yeah, deal. Yeah, it's, it's like a thing that like, I think it's a thing that you see at the beginning that should tip you off that it's not yeah. going to be good. Oh uh, Yeah, okay. That's a good way yeah. of putting it. Um, Fuck, I don't, think... yeah, I don't know. Um, I think for me now would probably be that I just have too much stuff that I'm doing, but that's not really a red flag. That's cause I feel like a red flag is like a personality thing. Like it's not a, like being too busy because you're focusing on your career is not really a red flag. That's just kind of like, yeah, a, that's like, a, it's like just, an obstacle. Yeah. It's like a preference of relationships kind right. of, yeah. Somebody said being mean to service workers yeah, is like a red, flag. a red flag, but that's so mellow. But that, that's definitely a red flag. Like if you're, if you're not a good person, yeah. but the weird, th like for me, I'm not, like if I detect a whiff of that, I'm out, you know, like I can't, I'm not interested in like bad people. So yeah. 
Maybe my red flag is that I try to like, I try to understand people too much, like almost on like a psychological level sometimes where it's like, I like to pick apart like why people are the way that they are. Not in like a toxic way, but I really like to understand people, but too much, you know what I mean? Where mm. sometimes you just have to like accept that somebody just is the way that they are. Also, this, this could be a red flag for some people, but not for other people. I cannot stand taking space when I'm fighting with somebody. I cannot just step away and go like, like give them space. You know what I mean? Mm. If I'm having like an altercation with somebody, I have to solve it right then. Like I need, I yeah. need to solve it right then or else it drives me fucking crazy. Yeah. I'm on that boat. Yeah. Where some people need time. Like, like there's some people where they have to step away. And if you don't give them that time to step away, then it'll just make everything worse. It's like, I can't, I'll panic. I had a red flag happen at the literal very end of a relationship. Which is that it was like this really emotional breakup after like a year. And then we, we said like, okay, we're done. And I'm like sobbing. I'm getting up to leave. And she said, wait, we should have breakup sex. And I was like, <laughs> no. And it's like, please, like, shouldn't we like send it off in this, in the right way? Just like to have the memory together. I was like, no, we're, we're ending. Like, this is extremely painful and sad. So that was <laughs> a good being, red like, flag. Like, horned up by conflict. Did that person like to fight a lot? Yes. Because I feel like that's got to yeah. be some sort of like, we just had a big altercation. like they're, And then they're just riled yeah. up. Yeah. She's like, she's like, a, she's like, want to be a lawyer. Yeah. It's very like, yeah, very, uh, very intense. When my, me and my ex broke up, he just like walked away from the house and then turned his location off on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was the most, I don't think I've ever talked about this. It was the most dramatic, like the breakup itself was not dramatic. Like, it was actually, and, like, we were married, so it was, like, a very, like, quick breakup. Um, but then he just walked away from the house and turned his location off, and I was like, where are you going? <laughs> like, you live Wow, here. that's Like, such... where are you going to go? Oh, so you still live together at this point? We still live together. Okay. And it was, like, right after the breakup. Like, ten minutes after the breakup. He just walked away, turned the location off his phone. I was trying to call him, wouldn't answer. And then he ended up, like, going and and, like, getting picked up by his boss. And I was, like, I remember texting him and being, like, I oh, we're doing more haircuts. <laughs> no, I don't know. Here's the thing. I'm going to say something controversial. He's not balding that much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is thinning back here. It's I thinner. I think you're misinterpreting what thinning is and what like this is, which is where your hair starts and has to grow but out. But I used to like under the light, it looks like there's a big it bald does spot. It like that under the light. Yeah. It and it didn't used to do like that. that. It didn't used to do that. There is nothing. I would never, and I mean this genuinely, I would never look at your hair and be like, wow, that guy's balding. And even when like you Like to say, my face or just you even think head, of it? Okay. In my brain. I don't know what's going on. All right. Thanks for saying that yeah of course chat we're gonna do it's a dollar what's the meanest thing you've ever read a twitch chat or say before so i you might also have this okay which is that if somebody's super mean it's obviously a joke right mm -hmm. to really hit home and be mean they would have to be in this middle ground where it's believable and i don't think they're just trying to fuck with me like but, going for the throat kind of no no that's the thing if you go for the throat i know they're joking but the throat like in your butt like the hidden one Right, the hidden butt throat. Have you been camping? Yeah. You like camping? No, I hate it. I feel like it's controversial to say that you don't like camping. What? But camping sucks ass. I know, but I feel like like people say that you have to like camping and be outdoorsy and stuff to like, like if you don't like camping, you're like lazy or you're like, like, I don't, there's just like this idea of like, you have to stay inside your house and, or you, you can't stay inside your house and like indoor hobbies to be interesting. <sighs> That's not for me. That's what the people say. Mm -hmm. I think that is true for places where being outdoorsy is the main source of entertainment. Yeah. So like growing up in Sacramento, you didn't not necessarily camping, but you had to like go skiing or something. And right. I'm sure in Oregon there was a lot of that. Yes. Like, oh, you have to go camping. You have right. to go out. Um, but then if you come to LA where everybody's like a nerd weirdo yeah. and there isn't that much nature, like nobody here cares, right? Yeah, so true. I think it depends on where you are. That's true. Um, you can just not like uh, camping because there's not really anywhere to go camping out here. I mean, there, there kind of is. Not really. I mean, you have to drive a lot. Yeah, it's true. One time I backpacked 24 miles through uh, Central Oregon, and I cried like six times. Who's your least favorite and favorite YouTuber that you've met in LA? <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> I think the thing with like meeting uh, like other content creators is that most of us are just kind of like in this 
because we had a weird hobby and we wanted to like stay in our house and do something I, I think most of us have some sort of like maybe it's like a social anxiety or some quirk that makes us like not assholes so one thing is when I meet other content creators I find everybody's pretty normal okay another another pitch about that oh we actually we mentioned this earlier mm. what, like before the the podcast mm. which is that when you meet a YouTuber or streamer or whatever that you've already watched a bunch of their content. It feels like you already know them. Yeah, that is weird. So yeah, like he showed up today, and I, I when was the last time I saw you? Months ago. Know. Yeah. And he walked in the door, and I was like, I realized that I haven't seen you in a really long yeah, time. Yeah, it feels like. Or okay, I met I met C Dog VA. He's and, really nice. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. And so I I met him, and then Point Crow introduced him or like introduced us, and I, I'm certainly familiar with who he was. And he's like, oh, dog, I like really love your videos. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, what the fuck? But then so that was super unexpected. But then we like, you know, shook hands or whatever and started the conversation of like, this is the first time I've ever met or spoken to this person, but we're both super familiar with the other person. Right. So it's like, there's no, it's not like a normal human interaction where you have to like learn who this yeah. person is, right? You, you don't like meet a person for the first time. You are, you're just like physically touching a, a person yeah. who you've already interacted with a bunch. It it's very weird. strange. Like, also, everybody looks weird. Like, do you ever find when you see somebody in person that you watch their content, they're shaped odd? Not even like a like like anything about their body. It's just they're three-dimensional now. So they look uncanny. No? The one thing is height. Yeah. Everybody's height is super weird. Yeah. Because online, everybody's the exact same height, which is however yeah. tall they their camera mm -hmm. is in the stream. Yeah. yeah That's tall. Um, that is strange. Like, I find YouTubers are either way taller than I think they're going to be or really short. Yes. It's mm -hmm. very much. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I like very briefly met Nakey Jakey and I was like, you are like so tall. six, eight. Like, He's this person is gigantic. Or Hassan, who Hassan is like six, five. If you're in a room with Hassan, you can see him from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Jakey kind of too, but Hassan's dude, just a big guy. Yeah, Ted Ted uh, Ted Nibson is like tall. yeah. There's a lot of extremely tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like in an average LA party, from my experience, and I've only been to like three content, like you yeah. know, creator parties or yeah. whatnot. It's he says like, no whenever I invite him to things. Uh, yeah, you you like walk around and there's like Aiden and Jakey mm -hmm. and Ted who mm -hmm. are li or and Jarvis were all literally like average of six five and then next to them Conrad's pants and <laughs> Point Crow are talking <laughs> and have dropped the, the average kings. by over a foot and it's just <laughs> it's like true. it's real like there's almost nobody yeah. who's like like I'm kind of ruining I I'm right at the average I think how tall uh, are you six it's just straight six six hmm. well six one probably nice. so I'm like a little taller but nice. how tall do you think I am five four nice yeah Nailed it. Thank you to Doug for being here. Appreciate it. Bye, Hope Jack. you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to now walk over here and turn it to...